Okay, guys, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do second cut on the AFR Blue Hornet heads. The garage is already 88 degrees. I'm gonna fire it up. It's set at 0.6 lift, which is uh, within the realm of possibility for these. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna sail the string. We're gonna take a look at how the string does. Hopefully, we can see something. It's not gonna be easy for me to film. I need to. Do the string, do the phone, and do the light. I need to think of how I'm going to do that. That's going to be tough. So, let's get started. Let's turn the light off for this. Sorry about that guys, trying to turn it off before the dicum gets to the motors. Let's pause this and take this off the bench. Okay, I don't want to forget this and I think I'm going to, but look at how nice that is, right? Just a little powdering. Okay, not nearly as much chunkiness on it as we had. We do have a couple splatters, we got a nice hit on that edge of that chamber. The chamber is pretty much finished. I did what I could on the edge. And remember, when you do it, you can't go over where the gasket lays. And the gasket lays right against this, all the way to about here. It's right there. Same thing with the exhaust. You're able to just round it a little bit. Okay, what did we do in the chamber? We took care of around the plug, decreased detonation. We mow this down, give a little bit straighter angle for flow through the exhaust. We did have to move this. We have a little bit easier exit into the periphery of the valve. We took care of that as much as we could without causing problems. This is actually undercut a touch. It actually comes straight down and then it goes in a little bit that way, which is a DV thing. Okay, this has been taken out, got rid of the bumps and ridges in here. Okay, that's about it for the the chamber, which was a, quite a bit of work uh, to do in each chamber. Okay, you can see how rough a texture I used in it. That's for a reason. I almost made a major, major mistake with these uh, because I don't have the Mopar knowledge. Now I do, I did know that LA heads feed oil up to the rocker shafts. I did not realize that they go through this bolt boss here. All right, they're drilled. They're drilled here and they go around the bolt that's in here to feed up. So what happens if I break through here? It's not like a Chevy, you 
could care less, or you could just put a sleeve in. But if you did that with L.A. style, you'd have to put a sleeve in and re-drill the sleeve, and then you'd have to make sure you have enough clearance around the bolt to get the oil flow you need. It's definitely not a problem I want to deal with, and I didn't even realize it until I had already cut these pretty thin. So what does Charlie do in case of emergency? I call Brian Salter. I'm like, Brian, did I screw these up? He's like, how much you got? I told him. He's like, now nah, you're fine. See, everything is good when you have, you have the knowledge of experience from doing things like that. And uh, I want to thank Brian for that. That made me feel a lot better. But I did have to go through, and we do have some that are pretty thin, but should not be a problem. If the owner thinks it's going to be a problem, just use a standard volume oil pump. You probably don't need a high volume oil pump anyway. I learned that lesson a long time ago, too. Small block Fords were a problem with high volume oil pumps. Spin them to 7,000, pump the pan dry, seize the pump, snap the shaft, burn the bottom of the engine. Ask me how I know. Okay, a little bit different view. I think that's going to work out pretty well. I think it's funny. They took parts of the LA and they took parts of the Magnum, but they still didn't fix a lot of things that really needed to be fixed. Like this part of the chamber is too flat. Okay? That should have been changed. The plug location, I probably would have moved it uh, over here as close as I could have. I would have filled in a lot of this. And as far as the port design... The intake port has the real tight pinch like the Magnums, but it doesn't have the short side that's designed like the Magnums. It has the, the after the short side, it's pretty much LA design. Now the exhaust port is more LA design than anything else, and the end ports are not great. I could do uh, quite a bit more work to them, but I need to check, I need to do flow this style port first, the center ports and uh, see how much of a discrepancy we have. If, if these are way, way better, I will do more work to the end ones. All right, guys. Okay, this view should be pretty much the same as you saw it last time. That shadow by the bolt boss is going back out to the bowl. Okay, not all of them have that shadow. Because the casting isn't quite centered, so some walls are thicker than others. As of right now, they're all pretty thin. This one wasn't able to make it uh, look nearly as good as some other ones. Let's take a look down the line. Okay, you can just barely see it on the next one. This one looks really good, right? Hardly any transition from the bolt boss to the bowl. And you can see a little bit on this one. You can see a couple spots that I need to I need to get to still on that pole. Okay, we've got first cut here. We've got second cut here. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. How'd we do? And we didn't make that many changes. Uh, what did we do? We did give the pinch more area. We brought the bolt boss out as far as practical. And worked, we worked on the chamber. That's really about all we did. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but that's like a day and a half's work to do on eight, eight ports. So, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, small minus, minus, small minus, plus, 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 small pluses. I did change uh, my opener a bit. So I was able to get 0.8 on it. All right, so in the usable range, 263, it's easily a 500 horse head. Probably a little bit more than that if you did it right. You're not probably not going to get that with a flat top at cam. And uh, I'm glad to see some of the comments like, uh, built two engines like that. One was flat top, but one was a solid. And... Uh, the solid was better everywhere. Of course it is. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at the swirl curve. Kind of interesting. Now, 
we did make it so air could get out of the cylinder wall side of the bowl a little better. Remember, you're you're talking about you know twenty five thousandths, maybe maybe thirty thousandths. It's about all you're really going to be able to get out of it. So, but that will change how the swirl acts. So we got a minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, 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 plus, plus, minus, minus. It's basically a wash, okay? Do we have more than enough to do what we got to do? Yeah, we're plenty. Is it okay we're low here? Yep. Doesn't matter because using that swirl energy to fill instead of swirl, which is fine. As long as we get a kick up around our max lift, we're good. Okay, you guys will like this because it just shows you the little bit of work I did in the chamber i.e. right in this corner making this all nice and pretty cost us a little bit of flow which doesn't really make a lot of sense but it does that's the way it works sometimes right, you have to you have to do something with it you can't leave it stock when you're doing a porting job so you can just clean it up. You don't want to take too much area out there anyway for the way it's shaped. And you wind up losing a few CFM. Let's take a look. Okay, these are first cut numbers. These are second cut numbers. These pluses and minuses are in reference to this. Plus, plus, plus. All right, we got a little bit back from the cut before. We lost a bunch of low lift, right? Minus, 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 minus. Some decent sized minuses. 199, 193.7. Not, not thrilled with it. It's not bad when, when you put a pipe on it. It's close. I did add a pipe to these others. We're still, we're still pretty solid. Do we need to do more work to that port? It's a good question. We'll leave it at that. Okay, let's do our air speeds first cut. These are our first cut intake air speeds. Second cut, let's do some pluses and minuses. Okay, interesting, and I'm not 100% sure I have the answers. We'll take a look at our pinch. Now, the pinch got quite a bit more area, and it's designed for a 340 that'll spin to 6500 right now. So that's what I did with it. Okay. Is that more than you can get on a flat tappet? No, flat tappets will do that, no problem. I used to run flat tappets to 7,000, and I was clueless. So I know it can be done. Okay, down a little bit, up the tiniest amount, exactly the same. So as far as being even, this was more even, but this is also flowing a little more air. Not a huge amount, but a little more air at 0.6. Okay, how did we do here? Remember, we changed the shape of the pinch. We knocked the, the bolt down as far as practical, so that's going to be a little different. And we did the work to the chamber. Well, we got a huge step in the right direction, center of cylinder, where it's going to exit from the easiest, right? Okay, we stayed exactly the same on the cylinder wall side, even though we know we're probably exiting more air there than we were. Okay, how do we do on the short side? Now, the short side gets a little bit wider if you bring the head bolt boss out, you give the short side a little more area. So, that would be cylinder wall side. You would think it would go down. It actually did go down. Okay, good. As far as the center, almost identical, down one. And the top, up, up five. Not not terrible as far as uh, air speeds. In fact, better than we were doing. Okay. Okay, it's interesting to see what changing that chamber did a little bit to the to our air speeds, right? This was our first cut numbers. This is our second cut numbers. Equal, plus, plus. It's still dead in the corner. How did we do here? Got a good number here. A little bit lower in the center than it was, and it was low before. Okay, went up a touch on the floor. Not much, though. Still kind of dead. Good. 327 is good. Plus, plus. 
and we even lost more airspeed on the floor. Yeah, a little bit of uh, added aluminum would have really made a big difference in these heads. They could have been uh, they could have been a lot better. Now we're getting what we're getting out of them now. And the port was originally a 175. It's probably not more than 180 right now. Uh, if you think about it that way, these aren't bad. Could I put a bigger port in? Sure. I could, uh, I could do something with the roof and probably one of the walls. I could do that. Is it worth it for a 340 that may get stuck with a hydraulic cam? I would say no. It doesn't need that extra airflow. You guys can comment on that. Okay, you can see the exhaust. I still have a rough burr texture around the guide because it's so tight. I probably have to make up some sand rolls to be that small. A little bit different view of the intake bowl. From this angle, it looks like that uh, center wall needs to be moved out. We'll have to do some measuring and see what we can do with that. All right, guys. Give me some input, because uh, these got a lot of hours in them already. I appreciate you helping out, hanging out. Have a good night.